Well, it was a very good debate. Um, we are start of a new commission. Ms. von der Leyen said the Green Deal is one of the key priorities and so it's good to have a discussion with the commission, uh, with industry, with NGOs and with parliament, with members of parliament, because we have to do the legislation in the coming month. The electric mobility topic by itself is rolling. You know, there's product in the market available and uh, the customer is actually starting to pick up the product and actually buys it. But on the other hand, there are many things still to do. Uh, the infrastructure is a big topic, you know, that needs to be solved and we have many discussions around that. But uh, when you want to see electric vehicles on the road and with that the carbon uh, reduction effect, you certainly need to be complementary when it comes to infrastructure. So that is certainly one topic here to be discussed. I think there is no one size fits all and there is not one just electric or, or just just um, diesel or just e-fuels, there is a, a mix and so uh, it's very crucial uh, that we stick to the principle of technology neutrality, that we give the path to many options and not this narrow-minded one-size-fits-all, this does not fly for transportation with cars and uh, trucks. Can we really afford the next two decades to remain investing in two different technologies? So we think that different uh, transport modes will have different solutions. When we are talking about light duty vehicles, about cars, passenger cars, uh, what is very clear is that battery electric is the most efficient by, 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 by far. If you are talking about hydrogen or even worse uh, synthetic fuels, you are talking about a way higher amount of renewable electricity that would be needed to deliver exactly the same service. So in that case it's clear. There are other sectors like aviation where electric planes will not exist anytime soon, so we will need to go towards uh, synthetic fuels, for example. On the other hand, we want to understand uh, what uh, European policymakers have to contribute in order to make sure that electric mobility is really flying. So one thing is obviously to bring the product to the market. That's the responsibility of the OEM, so the car manufacturers with that. But on the other hand, we need framework conditions, and namely infrastructure, but also tax and incentive questions. Because when you look into the European Union, you certainly have a strong north and west uh, region where electric vehicles are already in the market, but then in the south, and the east of the European Union, it's a little bit more difficult and certainly the numbers are there relatively low. But ultimately we need a common market in the European Union for electric mobility and that is something that depends strongly on what uh, policymakers in Brussels are actually doing. Uh, beyond um, all the emission uh, regulations that you can do for individual cars, what is very important is to uh, make sure that you improve the traffic uh, and uh, one of the ways to do that is to bring connectivity to the cars, make the cars more intelligent and eventually uh, solve uh, the emission problems. When it comes to infrastructure, we need to be sure that we invest on the right solutions. In the current Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Directive, there is still a push for things like natural gas, which is a fossil fuel, which doesn't make any sense. So we need to be sure that we invest on the right things. And that has to happen both in urban and rural areas, in areas where it's not economically feasible to install this infrastructure. We need to ensure that that also happens there. Like it happened like in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s in Europe, we made mandatory to install gas uh, stations in places where maybe it was not economically feasible. We need to do the same when it comes to charging infrastructure, for example. 